the new way everyone is getting their cell service. No overage penalties, great rates, keep what you do not use, no contracts, and someone will actually pick up the phone when you need support. Use our link and get $25 off your first month's service or your new phone. Just go to tech-zen.tv slash ting to save $25. Hello, welcome to another episode of Let's Make It. This is episode number 28, and I'm here again uh, this week with Bob. Say hi, Bob. Hey, Mike. How's it going, Bob? It's going good. So you said you're getting some rain down there? It is nice and cool in Texas today. It's been That's raining good. all day, and I don't think it even got up to 80. So. Yeah, and we were in the mid-90s today up here. Incredible for July. <laughs> well, mid nineties for Texas in July would oh, be cool too. Yeah. So. No, no, agreed, agreed. Yeah, we're just getting on. We have a little hot spell going on. So, um, all right. Before we go too far, I want to remind everybody. We and this is the. I guess I've got one more week yet to remind everybody this. We're moving our YouTube channel uh, to a centralized YouTube, and it's. Um, TechZen. I'm sorry, YouTube.com. Let me get the right thing up here. I'll get it right. There we go. Um, it's youtube.com um, slash Texan TV. And uh, we all the shows, the last five weeks are, are, are there already. And next week will be the last one we put on our old channel. Um, the old channel is not going away. It just won't get new, new content because our website still has all the links to the old shows. So when you watch them on the website, the only thing is not in the last four or five, four or five weeks is actually... Um, on the old channel still. We're not going to get get rid of that. So just a reminder, I'm going to remind you one more time. And then last week, next week will be the last time you have to hear me nag you about getting over there and getting signed up. Okay, so this week we're going to do something um, a little different. Again, we're not going to do anything really code-wise. We're actually going to show you uh, wh how you can make a PC board using a free tool called Fritzing. So we've been playing with this, and you've all been playing with it for a couple of weeks now. I don't know, a month maybe even. Yeah, probably well longer than that. Actually, we, yeah, maybe uh, because, yeah, I don't remember, we showed you these boards before. Uh, these were all done in Fritzing. And, you know, so it's probably been longer than that. Um, yeah, it's been longer than that, and we've shown uh, some schematics before. Right, right. That, that came from Fritzing, so. Right, and we're going to show you, um, Bob's going to go through and created a design, and then I'm going to, after the halfway point, we're going to, kind of come back and show you some of the little quirks with it that we found. They're easy to work around if you know they do it. Um, it just it can catch you if you don't know is what's happening. So we'll show you some of that stuff as well. So I'm going to send it over to Bob to you ready to get started? Yeah, let okay. me uh, let's let, let me switch to my desktop. All right, there's my there's my desktop. All right. And now I've already I've already started fritzing and let's pull it up. And one of the one of the nights frit well let, let's back up just a little bit. Fritzing is a tool that uh from everything I've read it did start off as an Arduino based tool to help people design small circuits. And one of the really nice things about it is that you can uh lay things out just as if they were on your breadboard so which is which is really convenient um, and then we have a so right here we have the breadboard view and then we can switch there it is there's my little bar we can switch to a schematic view and if we're interested in making the PCB we can switch to the PCB view so tonight uh, we were talking about going back and doing um, just a simple circuit. Uh, and this is actually the one that we did back in se episode 17 or 18 where we had a couple shift registers and 16 LEDs and an Arduino. So tonight we're going to, that's what we're going to, we're going to draw, we're going to draw that up tonight. So we ready? Yeah, go for it. All right. Well, let's. Let's come over here. The first thing over here on the right-hand side is our parts editor. And there's, there's a decent selection of parts in here. And some resistors and different values. And uh, here's different LEDs and connections and wires. And down here, is that it? There is an Arduino Uno. So 
We're just going to grab it and drag it and drop it in. Maybe. So there we lo go. Love a live show. <laughs> That's right. Well, it, I, I guess uh, I, I've got too much running on my machine tonight. So, uh, so here we have an Uno. And just for fun, we're going to rotate this guy 90 degrees. Okay. And, and this is since we're going to use some uh, shift registers, I already know this IC right here is a shift register. So we'll grab him. Drag him over, and boom, he's in the, he's on the breadboard. And it's actually easier doing this than a real breadboard. So since we're going to use 16 LEDs, let's use two shift registers. And, and we probably should note, the reason they think they turn green is because something's plugged into them. That's right. So yeah, it's just something's it's an easy, in. it's a visual notification that you're attached to that. And if we would, and if, and something else in the same line is if we click on a a little one of these uh, uh, little dots right here, it shows you everything that's connected. So if we click right there, you can see the whole row on the breadboard is connected, and that pin right there happens to be serial out, which will which we'll actually use here in just a moment. So, um, now the way I always do these, I start off with my shift registers and then start adding my LEDs. Uh, so, here's a shift register. Oh, let me do this first. I always tie the two sides of my breadboard together. And since this one is the positive rail, let's just make him red. So here we've got our, our rails are connected together. So, and in uh, fritzing, it does, in these parts, it does tell you what each pin is. So here we have uh, our 5 volt supply pin. So we'll just connect that. And we'll connect that one. And if I, where's, is this one ground? Yep, there's ground. And I like to be color coordinated, so. So we've got our two grounds. And on a 595, we have an output an enable and a master reset. And since this is going to, since this little demo circuit, we're not going to do any input on the, uh, on the shift register. We're going to use, we're going to just tie the output enable to ground. And which one is it here? There we go. And then the master reset, we're going to tie to 5 volts. Uh, where is it? Yep, there we go. And I guess if uh, if people that they're not interested in changing the wire colors, they don't have to do that. But now we've got but now we've got our our two shift registers. We've got supply. We've got voltage to them. We've got output enable set. And now let's connect. Let's see. That's output pin one, which makes this one serial data in. And hopefully I have these numbers right for what we did in episode 17 or 18 when we did this same basic circuit. If 
I remember right, we used pin 11 for, no, we used pin 12 for data. So we've got our, our Arduino pin 12 connected. And let's see, this is the latch. And the latch, we used pin 10. And the clock is pin 11. And since these two are uh, connected in series, we can also connect the uh, latch and clock pins together since there's, there's only two of them. So we'll connect, let's see, make sure that I have that right. Yes, latch pin, latch pin, clock pin, clock pin, and then because we're connecting these serially, we're going to connect the output pin of the first shift register to the input pin of the next shift register. Which, that's serial data in. So now we've got that one connected. So now we can send data out. And while I'm thinking about it, we need to get some power to this guy. So how about five volts? And we wait. And ground. And one interesting thing here is that I got to change this wire color. If we click on the breadboard, you can see everything that's tied to ground right here. Or everything that's tied to 5 volts, which is really nice when you're trying to figure out where you're connecting things. Okay, so now that we've got the basic circuit hooked up, let's put an LED in there. So here, where'd they go? LEDs, LEDs. There we go. So here's a, here's a basic LED. And we'll just put that guy there. And since I actually like... I like these blue LEDs. And where'd they where to go? I like that one. So there's our LED. And to go with it we need a we need a resistor. Okay. Let's rotate him. and then put them on the breadboard. Oh, where'd he go? All right. And let's tie this one to ground. And then the source We'll come over here to the f this pin right here. This second pin is the uh, is the z the first output. Uh, it's labeled Q zero. So there is the first output pin, and now we have we have an LED connected. And one of the one of the little tricks with uh, uh I'm going to change this. Here's one of the things that you can, when you have a line like this, you can grab the middle of the line and just drag it out. And it'll, makes, makes looking at this a little easier, a little more organized. And then, so now we've got our LED, 
So now we're going to, I'm going to select the LED by press the right button, the shift register, and this wire. And just like uh, nearly everything else, you have copy paste functions, but one of the, one of the little tricks uh, in fritzing is they've got a command D. Well, I'm using a Mac, so on my keyboard it's Command-D, and it actually does the copy-paste for you and duplicates. That's what the D is for. So here they are. And we're just going to do Copy-D. And put a few of these in here. And now that I've got a few of these, I'm actually going to cheat and I'm going to select all of these at once, since all I'm doing is copying and pasting. Command D. Oops. It's not where I wanted it. So undo. On my on the Mac keyboard that's command Z. Try this again. Command D again to get me a, get myself another group of four. I'm, I'm a little surprised that this is running as slow as it is. I'm guessing it's because my machine's also running Skype to get the display back to you. Yeah, probably. And it's not, because uh, it is a little faster than this normally. And Skype is quite the CPU hog on a, uh-oh, well, guess what? I just crashed it. I've seen this error before. Okay, you don't see it on this screen, but uh, it's asking me to save. Okay. Nothing like live TV. That's right. That's part of the fun of it. That's part of the fun. So, all right. Well, let's uh, let's see. Where do I want to put it? Put it? Uh, how about? Oh, and it's not letting me save either. You have to give it a name first. Ah, that's right. Thank you. You can you can stop the panic now. <laughs> okay. Well, unfortunately, that does happen occasionally. Yeah. So save often. And now, um. I'm sorry, you're getting my, my blank screen back. I'm trying to start. That's okay. Uh, okay. And off uh, on my other monitor, I just got the, uh, uh, the notice from Apple telling me that, that it caught, oh, send. you know, <laughs> what, yeah. So I've, I've sent the uh, error report to Apple. And Fritzing is trying to open back up now, and I'll get it back on this monitor.
Yes, this is the 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 glory of of a live show. That's right. <laughs> but this happens in the real world, so it's you know it's a great example of what can happen. Yeah, it does. And uh, the only time I've ever had these uh, these kinds of errors from fritzing is when I'm dragging things, and that was the error that it that was the error message that it gave us was uh, something about dragging. It doesn't. It didn't like what I was doing, and I've never quite figured out what it is. I have one file that it somehow got corrupted, and I can still see everything in it. But when I open it, it says these certain parts aren't found, and they're just standard parts. It's not like I did anything unusual in there. Yeah, I haven't. The the when I've seen that error, that's because I did a a custom part. Well, it could be well, it could be the case with me. I did a custom part, and uh, maybe I lost it somewhere. But if it's a custom part, it was just an IC redone, you know, with a different name. Okay, here it's trying to come back up. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like I lost anything. That's good. Can you zoom it in a little bit? Yeah. Well, when it uh, when it gives the disc, there we go. Now nah, it's still trying to load it. Yeah, the joy of live of a live show and two monitors. Okay, so there we go. So here we are, and nope, these are not actually connected, right? We'll just. These actually wouldn't make any difference on the schematic, uh, moving them up. I just, I like things to look, to look nice and organized. And actually, that's a good um, tip for somebody who's just starting off designing is keep things organized, consistent. And it makes uh, debugging your design a lot easier when you do that. Uh oh. What did you do? Command Z. <laughs> Command Z. There we go. I don't know what I did, but it, it went crazy. Come on. There we go. Yeah, now I have to fix these wires. Yeah, because they're going to the wrong they're, they're, wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, never we, work. <laughs> we, we wouldn't have a real good circuit if we left it like that, would we? You'd have like four LEDs that wouldn't light. Yeah, while we were waiting for it i've been watching skype and it's it's chewing up an awful lot of my cpu right now so okay so now we've got our leds lined up we've got resistors for all of them we've got the first led connected and then starting with this pin is label it's labeled q1 so it's the second output um so we're just gonna start connecting And one thing I have noticed about fritzing is when you when you select a wire color, the next time you work on a wire, it goes to that same color. And I don't know that I'm going to fix these for the entire 
for the entire demo because I think uh, folks will get the you'll get the idea. Yeah. Uh, of w what we're doing here. Okay, we'll get this guy off. Oh, and this actually give me a chance to show something when you're when when you're running these wires. I now have an extra bend point. And if you right click on your mouse, there's remove bend point. Your wire three. And what do you think, Mike? Think that's a, uh, because from here on out, it's just wiring up the rest of them. Should we continue? Yeah, continue? yeah. I think you did enough on this one to show okay. what's going to do on the schematic side. So, he, yeah, okay. And then, so here we, we've got our, our breadboard. It's all laid out, ready to go. And if we s switch to schematic, now it'll give us a schematic view of what we just did. And let me zoom out. Um, and this is the first time I've actually seen this. So now, can you see the wires? Um, I can see them, but I'm, yeah, they're very light on the... Okay. Uh, the broadcast. Well, the, these are these are trace lines. So they're, they're not full size wires. You can wire if somebody wants to create a wire and put them in right here. They sure can. They can do it. So they call them rats nets, rats nest lines. And they're yeah. That you're right. And they're all they're all right here, and in. Uh, in larger, uh, I haven't seen where Fritzing does it yet, but uh, the RAS nests in in larger commercial software, you can actually trace all your lines and verify uh, verify your design with those net lists. Yeah, I don't think they have they have a electrical check. In, no, in I, I don't. I don't think so. So. Uh, and Skype is really giving me trouble now. But all the wires, but I, I hopefully, you know, somebody can see that uh, all the wires are connected. Uh, we've got the, we've got four LEDs and four um, resistors all connected in here. And here's actually, okay, this. Uh, well, it's actually this, uh, this is driving me nuts. <laughs> Live TV and I'm getting annoyed with, with, uh, <laughs> with my computer. <laughs> Well, I I hope uh, you know the yeah you know, the point we're trying to make is that um, you know here's the schematic everything is connected and you know if if I were uh, you know drawing this out uh, you know as a as a real product. Um, you know, I would organize the schematic so it's easy to easy to view, easy to see. Um, right, you see him. He's arranging things right now, so it's easy to see. Yeah, you can turn the things around different directions. You can flip yeah. them. Yeah, and and I just flipped the Arduino, and here, okay, so here's a uh, five ninety five. So I'm I want to rotate it counterclockwise ninety degrees. And in a in a in a product, I would, uh, you know, I'm not sure what I did there. Control Z. But it, you can see that it's pretty. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to see if I can. It's pretty easy. 
find it's pretty easy to re yeah it's pretty it's pretty easy to rearrange and then and this is where uh now we're switching to the PCB view. This is where the Arduino, this is where fritzing really lends itself. And it's customized for uh, building shields. And, and you've had a couple shields on the show before that you, yep. that you built. And um, so here, here's our, it, fritzing gives you the, the layout. There's, there's the basic shield layout right there. Yeah, so, and now if you if you go over and you click on the board and then you click on the size, you know, you can actually or the the size and sizes the shape maybe. Let me go here and look. If you click on the shape where it says rectangle, you can actually select Arduino shield and it'll cut it down to exactly the right size. There it is. There it is. And then from here, you can arrange. Oh, there it is again. I drug something and got the exception. Hmm. Live TV. That's right. Well, while you're doing usually, that, we'll, we'll, usually it doesn't happen to me this often. Well, while you're doing that, we'll say since we are talking about live TV, we do do this show live every Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern, and you can come and watch us live. You can hop in the chat room, chat with us live, ask us questions. We'd love to have you in there, uh, and that's every Monday night. It's 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. on the West Coast. Uh, I believe that's 1, 1 a.m. in the London time zone. Um, but yeah, we definitely would love to have you come and, and chat with us, interact with us. Yeah, it's always nice to get feedback and hear from folks and... We've been and getting, I've got it. We've been it's getting reopening feedback. now. Okay. We've been getting feedback through email, which is great. Love to have that too. Uh, don't stop, just don't stop doing that. But if uh, you have the time and you want to come in and, and chat with us during the live show, that'd be awesome too. Yeah, right now would be a good time to be answering a question, wouldn't it? That's right. <laughs> but I don't have any to answer, so I don't have no questions to answer. That's why. So as you can kind of see, Fritzing has a few little quirks here and there, and we're actually going to, the second half of the show, going to walk through a couple that have come back um, and confused me, uh, but we figured how to get around them, so we're going to show you some of that as well. And maybe the folks from Fritzing are watching. <laughs> you know, I think they're probably going to watch this, so... Well, the one thing I, you know, on the PCB, the one, the last thing I wanted to show everyone is that once you've got all the components on the, um, on your PCB, there is an auto router. Um, and I think Fritzing from the comments that I've read, they, they realize the auto router needs a little work, but it does work. It it will route for you. And uh, the last board that I did, uh, I would I let it auto route, take the lines that I liked, and lock them in place, and let it auto route again, and just continued until I had the whole board the way I liked it. Yeah, that's kind of what I did. I found the ones that because there's a few that didn't make sense necessarily how they did things the way they routed them. And I would fix them and lock them in and reroute, and it would, right. it would, you know, get better every time. I think in the end I had a couple. The last one I did I had a couple. I had to manually route, and it was a it was a lot of work to manually route it, but I got it. To, I got it to do it.
Okay, let me just get all of this on the board. And I'm not going to be real neat about this. Oh, moving the line. I don't want to move the line. I want to move the LED. Uh, well, that's disappointing. Yeah. Well, I wanted to show the auto router, but um, maybe the folks from Fritzing can help us out there and uh, help me uh, tell me what I'm doing wrong, and we can come back to this. Um, okay. I mean, I can show you. I actually have something that can show that we're auto routed. So. Okay. Good. Um, but before we go into that. Um, so Bob and I have been, you know, getting some boards made different places. Um, like I said, we have these that we actually got done from Fritzing and they, they're nice. I mean, they're all white. Um, they came back. I mean, they're with Fritzing. It's, it's so simple to output. It basically is one click, get the file and you upload it to Fritzing and they will make it. Now the thing about Fritzing is they do production, I guess we consider them production runs, where they get so many of these boards they made and they put them all together. And you know, when they make the boards, they have this big piece of copper and they'll put a bunch of these boards on one big piece of copper and we'll get it made. So they basically save up a whole bunch of people and they'll, they'll tell you about uh, the date they're going to do it. So like the last one I did, they think they held it for like seven days before they produced it. And it's located in Germany. So depending on where you are in the world, it depends on how long it takes you to get it. But it may not get produced for a week or two, so just kind of kind of remember that the pricing is okay. It's not it's not outrageous. It's pretty decent. And that's I think part of that's because they're batching them together, and uh, but they come back really nice. It's very quick, very easy. So I haven't made I have I hadn't had a big uh, bunch of boards made from them. But if you're just making like hobby type boards, I think they're they're great. And the, the boards are perfect. I had no problem with the boards at all uh, when I got it. And like I said, we we've shown these on the show these two shields on the show already so um they they work great and we have other ones i have i think six more coming from them right now we're waiting to get and then i had some boards made from my company um called pc pcb express and i was telling bob earlier before the show these are probably the nicest boards i've ever had made um, they're very solid and these are actually I'm going to use these to do a button board with so you can see the buttons are push buttons So I wanted something that was very very strong and I left a lot of the copper on here just just for that reason make it really strong and um, These are done very very nice. They're a little more expensive than the fritzing boards um, And if I think if I did them in bulk, it probably would end up being uh, a little bit different But these came out really good and then Bob found a place called seed studio um, and we haven't we haven't gotten into those boards yet, so we can't say what they're like. But yeah, the, those boards, um, I got the notice. Uh, oh, I guess a week ago that they uh, they were built and they were shipped. And because I chose the cheapest possible shipping choice, I'm still probably looking at several more days before I get them. But they are on their way. So uh, by next week's show, I'll I, I should be able to tell folks what the what the quality looks like all right so we're going to keep looking around for different different places to make pc boards but i will say fritzing is a, a good choice um the boards i've sent i sent one of each of these boards already to bob and so he hasn't he's seen them they're good quality boards they're um if you compare like the difference in size they're a little thinner than this board probably about half the size of this board that i had made but for what you're using it for for a shield i think it'll work just fine yeah, the quality the quality looked real nice. Right. Um, the the silk screen was done well. Yeah, so, very clean. Yeah, yeah Fritzing the they make it if if you're using their design tool and um, and 
ordering it from them. They make it very convenient. And, and very simple. <laughs> and very simple. And you're right. They are reasonably priced. Uh, you know, it's, they're not... They're not the cheapest place to go to, but they're not the most expensive one either. Right. And the, the only thing is if you, you know, the delay in the production, which all depends on when you actually um, go to get the production done. Because like I said, this last time I did it with those six boards, it was like a, less than a week and they were, they were done. So I came in at the right time and, th and they can tell you when, you know, when the production run actually is. And then the shipping from Germany, which I don't remember how long it took last time. A week and a half, maybe, to get here, something like that. So it's like, uh, that that sounds right. Yeah, I, that's. I think that's what you said before. Yeah. So yeah, that's definitely a, a great option. Um, so in the second half of the show, uh, I wanted to show you some of the little quirks we found and how to get around them. But uh, before we do that, let's go look at this. This is actually uh, one of the boards. Actually, it's this board right here. I have my just had in my hand uh, that was done with the auto router, and there was no manual. Let me get this zoomed up here. There was no manual intervention required for this one because it wasn't that wasn't that complicated of a run. So there you can see that was actually generated all all by fritzing. Now I added some of the the text on there, obviously, but this was all this is a single shift register and with um, eight LEDs and eight resistors, and I pretty much just placed them where I wanted. And then right here's the button for auto route. And when you press the auto route button, it goes through and it routes everything to the best that it can. In this case, it routed everything on its own. It didn't require any manual intervention at all. Um, I have a couple things that are kind of complicated where it has had to have manual uh, intervention. So um, my, you know, I, I use Eagle for most things, but I'm starting to use this more and more for the simple stuff because it's so quick to get things done with. All right, so a couple of the the oddities, and I'm going to uh, show you, let's go over here. I generally draw from a schematic, not from the breadboard. Um, so it's, I do things a little differently than the, than the way Bob showed you. Uh, and that has a few oddities. And if you can see this, here's the schematic. And I basically started with an Arduino, a resistor and an LED. And the LED goes to five volts. So I drew um, a connection from the LED to D7, then from, LED to a resistor and then from the resistor to five volts because basically I want it to take um, Actually, I have this backwards don't I? Now let me let me make this change real quick. Oops. Yep <laughs> That wouldn't work very well Yeah, and and you're right uh, normally I wouldn't design from a from the uh, breadboard, but that's where uh you know, that's what fritzing is kind of designed to do, is to right. take you from the back breadboard to the schematic to ordering the PCB. So the the last, well, this board that's coming from China right now, I didn't, I don't even know if I went to the breadboard view. I think I did it all in the schematic. Yeah, so the, the, the only problem with that is, and, and why I do a couple of things in the schematic starting out, and I'll show you what I do. Um, to get past some of these problems. So very basic, one LED, one resistor, five volts and going to D7. D7 goes low, the LED should, should turn on. So if you go look at the breadboard, well, I'm gonna move this around too, but. So you, one of the things I want you to notice is where the five volts is coming from. The five volt is coming from this ISCP pin, five volts. Well, when I make a shoe, I don't generally plug into either ISCP one or two. I just go use these outside pins. So the problem with that is if I go and look, work on the PC board, and you're going to see the PC board here very basic. Let me turn this LED so you can see the wires where they're going, and I'll zoom in here. Let me go in one more time. All right, so if you look at where the wires are running, I don't have ISCP on this Arduino. So it shows it on the physical, on the breadboard view, and on the schematic view, this five volts applies for all the five volt pins. So if I come over to my PC board and I auto route, 
that's done, but what's missing is this pin doesn't go to five volts because it's trying to go to ISCP, which isn't even on this shield here. So the way I get around it is on the breadboard, I will actually, let me get rid of this five volt wire right here. And delete that line. I actually will run five volts from here to this bus like Bob did in his. And I'll change this to reds because it's five volt. Oops, made it blue again. Yeah, my last board, I remember running into this. I just don't remember how I fixed it. And I may have done just what you're doing. Yeah, I basically force it to go to that pin. So if I go back and look at the PC board now, there's the wire because I forced it to go to that pin. And the thing is, if you go to the schematic, it's still here. It's still going to the exact same place. So it's very confusing. They almost need to have different 5-volt pins on the Arduino drawing or take off the ISCP in this view in the routing view, because when you go to the PC board view, it's not there. There's a disconnect. Now, I don't know who made this actual part, but the way I get around it is I force, in the and I do this in the breadboard view, is I force a connection from to five volts to here, and anything that goes, and also I do it with ground too, because there's also ground in these that sometimes will take over, or the ground will be up here, uh, from this ground pin up here versus the ground pin down here. So I know where I want it to go from, and as long as it's not ISCP, I generally leave it like it is. Um, and then like I'll take the same ground and I'll run it over to like this. And now I'll run things to this bus for ground. So that's that's the way you get around it is you force it to go to this five five volt. And if I cover the PC board and I auto route again. There you go. It ran the it ran the pin in the right place. So that's one of the, the weirdnesses that I found um with fritzing and that's how I get around it. In fact, I've actually went through and designed a whole board and was getting ready to getting ready to order it and I had reset switch right here and it's supposed to go to ground for reset and it was no ground to it because it was going to a ground in one of these ISCP plugs that was missing. So um, definitely when you get these things designed, make sure you follow the wires through. All right, so, um, and this is, these are more complaints than anything at this point. Um, when it comes to to designing like uh, these schematics, you see this angle right here? It doesn't square itself up very well. And you can't, well, no, it's still not square. It's going down now. Um, you can't always make it look real pretty. In fact, let me go back. Do I still have the other one open? Um, I do right here. If we look at this one in schematic view, now this one's actually pretty square. So you can see this one's very square, actually. Let me go to the other one that was up here. Yeah, I've had trouble. I've had the same trouble, but I've been able to set my change my grid size and at least th get things to look fairly what fairly good. All right, well, here's one. I don't know how it, it's all happened. They get all messed up. Um, actually, look at this one. You see the, the my drawing. My numbers are off from the drawing completely. So it, this is the one that gives me the error sometimes when I'm in here about the part being missing. So I don't know what's causing that. That's not a good example either. But oh, you can kind of see with this. See, this is a reset button, and they're just not aligned properly. So it's that'd be one of the things I'd like to see fixed. The other thing that's, and this, this is because I'm coming from a different platform, with uh, Eagle is you can't do buses or uh, actually they call them, um, networks in, in um, Eagle where you can say my ground, you see I'm running this ground pin the whole way around. This green is ground and I got to run it everywhere I want it where like in the, something like Eagle I can say it's a ground um, bus and I can put ground here, I can put ground here without having to run a wire everywhere. So if I look at something that's ground Actually, let me see if I have, do I have Eagle still open somewhere? No, I can open up and I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. This is one of those things that it's like a wish list item. Where's my Eagle at? There it is. Let's see if I have something in recent here. I don't. 
All right, well, I'm not going to show that. It takes long to find something. So, yeah, there's something that would be nice to be able to, to add in there. It would be like a, a bus or a network, depending on what software you're used to, to calling it. So what other weird things have we seen, Bob? Um, I had the the auto routing um, is is what's given me the, the most trouble. Um, but I didn't have a lot of trouble. There There's a – we haven't – talked about making your own parts uh there are several tutorials out there for making your own parts and i didn't have too much trouble doing that um and for a for a small board um fritzing is actually a pretty good pretty good little tool yeah so yeah, I, I was i was pleasantly surprised with it when first started playing with it and it actually didn't take me very long um well, it was after a show one night. You and I were talking about it. You told me about it, and I think within an hour, I had a basic part put together, or a basic schematic and and board layout. So it wasn't hard at all to pick up. Right. Actually, here's an, here's the example. I did I did have this around that I wanted to show. This is one where it didn't put ground where it should have put ground, um, because it was going to the missing plug. See this reset button. It's missing any kind of ground connection as well as this LED is because they're both going to the same the same ICSP connector, which is, doesn't exist in this board view. But you can kind of see with the auto route, it does some funny uh, things with routing, which I know they're working on the auto route, and, they, and that's one of the things that they talk about is um, some of the improvements they're making to the auto routing. And I, know, I can definitely tell the last version got better than the, the previous version. But they do have the, um, we didn't talk about this design rules, but in the, if you go into the routing, um, there's a design rules check. Why can't I select it? I'm not sure why I can't select it, but um, there's a design rules check where it'll go through and uh, it will check to see how close everything is to see if it's too close. Um, the thing that's a little bit odd is sometimes it does, it's auto routing and it makes things too close which seems kind of weird to me. All right. I didn't, I didn't run into that problem, but I know that when, when I was using the auto router, now that this, this last board, you know, I've got dozens of trace lines running on the top and the bottom, and I just had too many lines. So uh, on that one, I would find a few lines that I liked that were in the right place and then I would lock them in place and then leave them and then run the auto router again. Right. And that's what, that's what I was doing too. I was, but there came a point when the auto router wouldn't do any good after a certain point. I had to go in and do some manual, which may, which kind of makes sense because there's a certain point where you want to, you know, get things very tight, but not too tight. So I think it doesn't, it doesn't go and look for the, the real tight ways of, of, um, of cleaning things up, what it seems like. Yeah, and it, on my board, the first time, the first pass, I by default it'll run through a hundred variations of auto routing, right. and then give you, and then give you the best one. I had kicked it up to I think two hundred, three hundred, two hundred, at least two hundred, and it still had trouble auto routing. It, but I had too many, I had too many lines, I had too many components. Yeah, and where I've seen the, the most problem is when I get surface mount. Like this one I'm looking at right here is surface mount stuff. So this is all surface mount component, with the exception of the LEDs themselves. Um, and when you get that small, it, it definitely gets a little little harder to get things you know right on. Because you can see how small those you know, little pins are for surface mount. So. Yeah, surface mount does get a little small sometimes. Yeah, yeah. it's it's a, l a little small. It's a little. <laughs> yeah, um, and I the, the I did one actually this one that I just showed you earlier is a lot of surface mount. It's almost all surface mount, but the buttons, and um, this one has surface mount resistors, capacitors, and chips on it on the and it's all on the back side. And the buttons go on the front side. Um, so we'll see how well that that works out. All right. All right. So do we cover everything with Fritzing you want to cover? I think so. Uh, we've ta we, we, given the problems, we didn't get to really show auto routing and 
the the DRC check, but they are there. Yeah, I don't know why my DRC check's not working. This is the one I have problems with. Maybe, well, no, there, it's, it's going to work now, so let's come back. So here we have the DRC check. I'm going to go ahead and run it. Okay, well, it didn't find anything, so that's a bad example because I fixed it all already. Let me see if I can find one that I uh, haven't fixed yet. Oh, this one. Let me see what it does. Well, I don't know what's going on. I can't even see the PC board now. <laughs> um, sometimes this thing doesn't work. Just go to view. And you can change it to say what you want. No, I don't know. My first thing is actually not, not working very well either. So they don't really call it a beta version, but it is. It, I think it's still in the very early stages. But for what it does, it's actually pretty decent, even without the, the weird little weird things like this. I'm not going to save that. Yeah, I, yeah, we've had a few little oddities tonight, but uh, I think for me, the, my my biggest problem is since I'm coming into the show via Skype, uh, Skype is taking up a lot of horsepower right now. Right. All right, so here's another, this is a time-lapse camera control. Let me see if I have anything with DRC on this one. I can't do DRC on this one either. Let me go back and forth here and see what happens. Yeah, my first thing's not acting quite normal either. All right, well, we're just gonna we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna go on forward. <laughs> no reason to hold everybody up for for this, but it does do design rules check, and it'll it'll highlight on the board um, where it has concerns and give you a list of things as well, and you can go in and make changes. Um, it's kind of weird that it itself does things that are not in the design rules, but as it's, it's easy to fix them, so you just go find them and and rearrange things a little bit. And it does do copper and ground fills too. It's the board I was just showing you is copper is ground filled uh, because it's signal has a lot of signal stuff on it from the camera for the for the shutter control, and uh, the ground is needed so it doesn't pick up any kind of noise and do weird things with the camera. All right, so a couple housekeeping things. Um, you can always get us uh, downloaded automatically from. Uh, iTunes, anywhere like that, anywhere that's a podcast directory. Uh, you can even go into your Zoom and, and download us still. Um, it's audio only though on the Zoom, but you can uh, you can go find us pretty much anywhere you can get any kind of podcast. Um, we are a very visual show though, for, so it's always better if you have it on video. But if you like listening to us in the car, that's, that's great too. Um, and another reminder that uh, our YouTube channel is... Um, now tech zen that i'm sorry youtube.com slash tech zen tv everything is over there and after next week this show will only be over there so if you haven't gone and done that yet make sure that you do uh this is episode uh 28 and we are showing you how to use fritzing and make pc boards um and stuff like that so uh, if you have any questions about fritzing, you know, we can be definitely glad to try to help you out the best we can. Um, I can tell you that I have communicated with fritzing myself and they were very responsive. In fact, I got back, was it the CTO or something like that? I got the answer back from, um, so they're very responsive and definitely willing to, to help you out any way you can. And like I said, the PC board service, I had great luck with, uh, the PC board service, um, so far. I could, um, very easy. You basically send them your file, your, v, your VZZ file from Fritzing, and uh, they do it all from that point forward. So um, this show is recorded live every uh, Monday night at 9 p.m. We'd love to have you in the chat room tonight. We didn't have anybody in the chat room with us. Uh, if you can uh, make some time on Monday nights at 9 p.m., you can come and talk with Bob and I live. Ask us questions. We'd love to have the interaction with you uh, in the chat room. And if you have questions and you don't want to get in the chat room or don't, you, maybe you're not available at 9 p.m. So you download the show and you have questions, send us an email. We definitely love the email uh, feedback. Bob and I have been getting feedback. We got one or two this week, Bob. 
Uh, yeah, and actually, uh, one of the people we got uh, feedback from, um, he and I have been emailing back and forth nearly daily. Great. That's great. So he's he's got an interesting design that uh, has piqued my curiosity. So uh, I've been I've been helping him out with his design, and it's 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 a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. And so we definitely like like the feedback. Um, you, I mentioned talked about this earlier, but I forgot. We had somebody ask us about this, Bob. Remember the LCD controller that had the keyboard controller built onto it? Yeah, I got one. I got see, I got two. Um, so we're going to try to play with that and see what we can get to work. All right, good. So it just came this week. Um, it's a BV4109. It's a LIASI 2 LCD controller, and it has uh, the chip can do both input and output, keyboard input and LCD output. So we'll see if we can get that working. That was definitely a question we had a couple weeks back. It took me a while to get the chip in the board and everything. Uh, okay, I think that's it. Well, one more thing. Uh, we do have a Facebook fan page now, too. Uh, we're looking for some likes to get the name out there. It's facebook.com slash techzentv. Everything's techzentv now, so it's easy to remember. We want to make sure we do that so everybody knows where uh, to go get us. All right. I think that's it for this week, Bob. I think that's it. Um, next week is multiplexing and timers. Yep. Bob actually is doing a presentation, and he's going to do it for us as well. So we have something special next week from Bob. Yeah, it'll be a little different format than what we're used to because this is actually a presentation that I'm doing live over the weekend, and I'll have my circuit and my code and my uh, uh, PowerPoint, and we'll we'll just do it on the show. That's so, awesome. But it'll be multiplexing and using. We're going to use the uh, Timer One library from the Arduino Playground. Um, and we'll go through what multiplexing is and how it's real useful in uh, in in LED type displays. Awesome. All right, let's well, look forward to for next Monday. Yeah. All right. Okay, everybody. We'll Good see night. you later. Night. <laughs>